Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am really good, Brian. We got a lot of races to talk about in, in on this amazing Belmont Stakes undercard, all those grade ones. We've selected a handful that we really like. We did, Matt, and, and I almost feel bad because there's some terrific turf racing both Friday and Saturday that we're, we're not going to analyze. But hey, we only have so much time on this show. Let's jump right in. We're going to start with the Belmont Stakes of all races, Matt. 1.5 million, 1.5 miles, once around big sandy eight-horse field, Matt. Well, last week, we thought there might be a few more in here. It's down to eight. It's a pretty solid eight. I think there's six legitimate winners, Matt, but let's start from the rail out. We're going to work through the field. Burbonic, the big upset winner of the Wood Memorial, Matt, breaking from the rail. Yep, Brian, uh, the, winner, the winner of the Wood listed at 15 to 1 on the morning line for the race, finished 13 in the, 13th in the Derby. Uh, being realistic, I don't really give this horse a chance, but there's just something about him, Brian, that makes me feel like... Uh, he's going to be closer than I think. Hey, Matt, there's something about him because he won the Wood Memorial at 70 something to one. That's, that's the something about him. He really doesn't have speed. He's never showed speed. And I, I don't think that Wood Memorial's comeback is a strong race. I don't like him either of the three Pletchers. He's the one I don't like. Number two is essential quality. And he's the morning line favorite. Louis Saez ridden Brad Cox trained champion two-year-old Matt. He's only got one career loss, but it was his last race when he finished fourth out of the money in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, Brian, and, and two to one on the morning line, I guess deservedly so with his uh, 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 five wins and six start record. Um, you know, what was it in the Derby that the, the fourth place finish? The size of the field, that's never easy. Uh, um, but for me, Brian, um, my feeling is uh, he was fourth in the Derby going a mile and a quarter. And I don't think the extra distance is going to help this horse. It's possible, Matt. But on the other hand, his sire is Toppet. And Toppet has already sired three Belmont winners. So we'll have to see. I, I look back at that Derby over and over again. And I look at the race of such quality ran, Matt. And I kind of like the race he ran. He was part of the crunching of Rocky World at the start. But that didn't do him any favors made a nice move to get good position going into the first turn in the top third of the field. Matt, he was wide throughout. And if you really look at the last 50, 100 yards or so, I think he was running actually best of the four. Maybe that's a slight difference between mm -hmm. the other three. But I think he was finishing pretty well. Uh, only loss of his career. He's proven time and time again to have quality. I think he's one of the ones to beat in here. He's also got two, good tactical speed, Matt, which I think, generally helps in the Belmont and it looks like it'll help in this field the three is a horse I know you like he's the Preakness winner Matt he's Rombau that's right Brian and I and I and I love the way that uh trainer Michael McCarthy and the owners have crafted the campaign for this horse uh passing on the Kentucky Derby uh in a spot that they didn't think was was just right for the horse coming back in the Preakness. And, and he was an impressive winner. Yes, I get it. He got a perfect pace scenario, but I think this is a horse that is moving forward and will continue to move forward in the Belmont Stakes. Okay, Matt, I can't disagree with anything you just said. However, he's not gonna be one of my top picks in here. I've just seen too many horses over the years rally to win that Preakness and not do it in the Belmont. I, I'm worried twirling candy. I'm worried that he's not a true mile and a half horse. He's better rallying at shorter races. We'll see. He obviously moved forward in the Preakness, but on the other hand, two races against the Central Quality, he was beaten pretty easily in both. Number four is another horse we need to talk about a bit, Matt, and that's Hot Rod Charlie. Hot Rod Charlie is actually the third choice. So we have the favorite, the second choice, and the third choice here in the two, three, four post positions for the Belmont Stakes. Hot Rod Charlie has really done nothing wrong since he broke his maiden. Second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Third, yes, in the San Felipe, but it was a good third, a troubled third. Winner of the Louisiana Derby, and then a good third in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, Brian, I, uh, everything you said points to the fact that Hot Rod Charlie is a definite contender to win this race, a horse that you have to uh, use uh, 
in the wind spot or whatever kind of tickets you are playing. He's got this tactical speed. He's he out of uh, out of this field. He is one of the ones that I am confident can get the mile and a half uh, with his performance in the Derby and his performance in the Louisiana Derby. For me, there there are two things to to make your decisions about the Belmont Stakes, and one one of them is the ability to get the distance. And the other one is, you know, who the heck have you beaten on the track and, uh, and what kind of class do you have? So for me, hot rod, Charlie is one of the top two. Yeah. And it might sound weird to say this with the two-year-old champion and the Kentucky Derby favorite in the field, but I don't know that any horse has faced a tougher competition race in race out in the last four or five races than hot rod, Charlie, like you said, good tactical speed. We should also mention Flavian Proc, the, uh, the the hottest jockey on the West Coast, is sticking with Hot Rod Charlie, getting off the Preakness winner in here. So that's something to think about as well. Ron Bauer, though, picks up a good one in Johnny V. Matt, at this time, I just want to remind people to subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Hit the notification bell so you always are on top of what we're doing here at Horse Saying there. We do appreciate it. And on that note, Matt, we'll jump back into the five. Fran Stohe. France go to Ina, a real long shot coming from Japan via Pimlico, where he ran seventh in the Preakness. Real long shot, deserved 30 to one long shot uh, um, in Japan. Um, he never won any big races, seventh in the Preakness after going up and uh, pressuring the pace a little bit. I guess maybe he will do that in the in the Belmont, but wow, he he's going to have to... Uh, uh, show something that he's never shown before in this race and going a mile and a half. That's not something I like to hear. Yeah, I'm with you, Matt. Uh, I, I did see some signs, some good signs in the Preakness, which we said before the race was probably a prep for the Belmont in that he was involved for a good mile in the race, but the way he faded down the stretch just makes me think it's going to be hard for him to really turn it completely around in this Belmont stakes. So it deserved a long shot, as you say. The six, on the other hand, that is six to one on the morning line. The fifth choice in this Belmont Stakes. I know a lot of people like known agenda, and I think there's good reason to think the Florida Derby winner can turn around his somewhat poor performance in the Kentucky Derby. Sure, and the reason that uh, people expect that is because of his trainer, Todd Pletcher, and all of the success that he has had in the Belmont Stakes before. Uh, Pletcher said at the draw, at, at the draw that... Uh, known agenda is training better than he ever has and, and likes him going in there. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he unleashes, unleashes a big one in the Belmont stakes and, you know, at fourth or fifth choice, um, you got to use him. Yeah. Yeah. You got to use him. That's, I think that's the bottom line Matt. he looks like a horse who can handle a mile and a half. He's got the breeding to handle a mile and a half. He looked really good at Gulfstream park in that allowance win. And then the Florida Derby win, I don't know that he's beaten the horses that a lot of them in here have already. Uh, maybe he's more of a grinder. A few months ago, I, I compared him to Vino Rosso, who wasn't quite ready to win the uh, Belmont Stakes when he was a three-year-old. We'll see, but he looks like a horse who should do well in this pretty small Belmont field, a horse who you would expect to be at least running down the stretch, a horse you think has a shot, a really good shot to hit the board for trainer Todd Fletcher. Number seven, Matt, again, is the wild card for me in here. His name is Rock Your World. He's the fourth choice on the morning line at nine to two. Joel Rosario's on him. He didn't get a fair chance in the Kentucky Derby. What's he going to do in the Belmont Stakes? You're right. He didn't get a fair chance uh, uh, in the Derby with uh, coming out of the gate, Rosario losing his irons, then getting bumped around a lot couldn't get out to uh, be part of the early pace. I don't know, Brian, you could read as many articles as you want handicapping this race. And almost all of them are saying rock, rock your world is going to be on the lead. I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe he is, but maybe he isn't. Um, we shall see beyond that Santa Anita Derby victory when he won on the lead in his races on the turf, he was a stalker. My feeling is even if he gets to the lead, they're not going to be setting a very strong pace. I'm dubious about Rock Your World. He is not a horse that I'm going to use. Dubious is not quite the word that I'm going to use. I'm not going to use him either. 
but I'm a little bit more scared of Rocky World because I realize how good that Santa Anita Derby was. I realize why people were talking so much about him going into the Kentucky Derby. Neither of us picked him there. In fact, I said, what's going to happen when he gets dirt kicked in his face for the first time? It didn't go well in the Kentucky Derby. This is a whole different band, uh, a whole different ball game for him in that it's a small field. I don't really see a lot of speed in here. The thing about it is Hot Rod Charlie Essential Quality, who I think are the two horses to beat, both have tactical speed. So that makes me against Rock Your World in this spot. But I do think he's going to be on the lead. I think he's got the most speed. Even in those turf races, you can see some fast fractions, Matt. So I expect him to be on the lead. But with Hot Rod Charlie Essential Quality breathing down his neck on the big Belmont backstretch, I'm dubious if he can last. So that's why I'm off him. Number eight, Matt, is the third from the Todd Fletcher barn. Manny Franco won the Belmont last year, Matt, with Tis the Law. He's on Overtook, who's listed at 20 to one on the morning line. 20 to one on the morning line. And I don't know, for me, Brian, Overtook might be the third choice for me out of the three Pletchers. For you, it was Bourbonic. Um, he just has not, you know, won a big enough race. He was third in the Peter Pan. He was second in the Withers. Yes, he was a huge price tag when he sold at auction and and such and it is Pletcher but um I'm not going to use Overtook I will on the other hand use Overtook Matt I think he's the live long shot of the three real long shots in here I like his progression he's clearly getting better his last three races you could see it he rallied for second in the Withers then he had a layoff and I think the Peter Pan was nothing but a prep a uh, mile and eighth without much pace. And he just kind of grinded along in the stretch. And if you look at the gallop out, he's quickly ahead of those two horses. I think he's a horse who will appreciate a mile and a half. That breeding is absolutely wonderful for dirt and a distance. I think Overtook will move forward off the Peter Pan. And if he moves forward off the Peter Pan, he's got a shot to hit the board and he's going to be a big price. So that's why I like Overtook a little bit. All right, folks, that's our preview. Let's get to our picks, Matt. First thing I want to uh, know is who's your top pick? Who's your long shot in this Belmont Stakes? My top pick is Ron Bauer. Um, you know, I think Ron Bauer is one of two horses that has a legitimate chance to win the Belmont Stakes. Long shot, I have to go with known agenda. We, you know, I, I consider him the top horse coming from the Pletcher Barn. And as we said, at fourth, fifth choice, he's my long shot. Very good. Okay. Matt says Ron Bauer is one of the two that could win the Belmont or he expects to, to win the Belmont. I feel the same way about my pick. My top pick is Hot Rod Charlie. Tactical speed. He's proven himself at a distance, maybe not a mile and a half yet, but I think that'll be fine when he gets to Belmont Park. I like the fact that he skipped the Preakness. He's here. I like essential quality quite a bit, but the odds on Hot Rod Charlie make me certainly lean that way as my top pick. My long shot I debated between two Pletchers. Bottom line is I just like known agenda a little bit more than overtook. He's certainly proven more to this stage. He'll be lower on the odds, but he is my top long shot as well, Matt. Let's get into our bets. What's your bet for this Belmont Stakes? Brian, I'm going to go simple. I said there are two horses that I think have a chance to win the race. Those horses are Ron Bauer and Hot Rod Charlie. Um, so I am going to do a $20 exact the box with Ron Bauer and Hot Rod Charlie. This isn't a race where I want to be betting a trifecta, quite frankly, Brian, because, you know, if I'm doing that, then I probably would want to throw in Essential Quality, who is uh, two to one. I don't feel that good about the, any of the long shots. It, it could possibly be the top three favorites in here. I don't like Essential Quality at all in the win spot. I know you talk about his pedigree and tap it and all this but that running style with that front foot I can't see him getting a mile and a half okay and I can see him getting a mile and a half he's one of the two horses that I think are likely to win this Belmont Stakes my two horses I agree with you on half of yours hot rod Charlie as you know my top pick but the other one is essential quality good tactical speed proven class he too skipped the Preakness he should be ready for the Belmont I like the race he ran in the Kentucky Derby. He won't be troubled at the start. He won't be as wide this time. I think he's got a big shot to win the Belmont as last year's juvenile champion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my top two, uh, Hot Rod Charlie and Essential Quality on top in a trifecta box. And the two that I really think are going to get up into the triple 
or at least one of them, are the two Pletcher horses I like, and that's Known Agenda and Overtook. Hopefully it's Overtook with the odds, but I'm going to use them in the second and third spots along with Hot Rod Charlie Essential Quality, whichever one doesn't win. So I have a $5 trifecta, part wheel, Essential Quality, Hot Rod Charlie on top of those two, plus Overtook and Known Agenda in the second and the third spots. Hopefully those four will complete my trifecta for a winning triple in the Belmont Met. So many races to talk about. What do you say we jump to the Met Mile, the million dollar Met Mile, Matt? One mile, Metropolitan Handicap. A lot of good horses, short field. But we got to start with Nick's Go, who is listed as a six to five morning line favorite. Short field, Brian, but certainly a select field. You know, I, I get tired of seeing people grousing uh, constantly just because they see a field that has six horses in it. This, this is a good, this is a really strong field of horses. All in people's eyes may have a legitimate shot to win the race. But yeah, Nick's go, Brian, coming back. First start since that trip to, to the Saudi Cup. Um, back in February. So pretty long layoff. But before that, we know Nick's go was clearly the best older dirt male in the country. But six to five, Brian, that's a tough price for me to take after that long a layoff. Yeah, that, I, I have I have questions about Nick's go in here, Matt. He hasn't run since February. His last race was Saudi, uh, the Saudi, the $20 million Saudi Cup over in Saudi Arabia. So that means a, a, a strange travel uh, trip, a long travel, uh, stable at a strange, uh, a strange track in a strange country. I, I think there's reason to believe Nick's go won't be 100% in here. He certainly could win. He has awesome speed. We saw that in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. We saw that in the Pegasus World Cup. But if you're telling me he is an overwhelming fee, uh, favorite in this field, I want to try to beat him. And I think there's at least four pretty good options to beat him in here, Matt. Let's start on the rail with mischievous Alex, who's been a sprinting machine so far in three starts. Absolutely. Three for three uh, in uh, 2021. And that last race, uh, that win in the Carter handicap going seven furlongs um, at Aqueduct was nothing short of spectacular, earning a 109 buyer speed figure. That's got to be one of the top numbers um, of the year. Uh, um, this is a horse that I think is, uh, uh, is going to continue to move ahead. He's coming from the barn of Safi Joseph in New York. Safi's got a uh, a string up at Belmont Park. And quite frankly, uh, Safi has been very, very hard to beat in New York thus far. Yeah, mischievous Alice, I'm, I'm going to go back to an old handicapping axiom that uh, I learned as a kid and I've never gotten away from it. Uh, good horses, really, really good horses who can run a mile and farther will beat the really good sprinters more times than not. And I think that's when it, what's going to happen here. I just am not on the mischievous Alex bandwagon in this one, Matt. I do think he's the one that pressures Nick's go early. And that's a good thing for my betting in the Met Mile. But I don't think he's going to carry that strong sprinter form to win this Met Mile. Number two is another horse to, uh, uh, to be worried about, Matt. That's Dr. Post. Only one start this year, but it was a good start winning the Westchester. At Belmont Park. Todd Pletcher trainee had a lot of promise as a three-year-old, but was one of those three-year-olds that was still learning, maturing, trying to put the pieces together. Um, but he seemed to do that in the Westchester, which is the prep race for the Met Mile at Belmont Park when he was an impressive winner. Yeah, and, and you know, he's the son of Quality Road, Matt, and I think maybe he likes a little bit shorter distance than a little bit longer distance. A mile might be right up his alley. I thought his best race last year was the second in the nine furlong Belmont Stakes behind uh, Tis the Law last year. He wasn't close to beating Tis the Law, but it was a good race. If he's improving as an older horse, uh, I, I already said, I think Nick Sko is vulnerable. I think uh, Mischievous Alex is vulnerable, and I think those are the two main speeds in here. Dr. Post is one of the three for me that can come pick up the pieces and win this Met Mile. Another one I think that could do that is Silver State, Matt. I think he's still underrated as a winner of five straight. Most recently, he won the Oakland Handicap for trainer Steve Asmussen. I can agree with that assessment that he is probably still underrated. But then on the other hand, 
I think for good reason. Um, he's never run against a field of this quality, Brian. So um, Silver State is not going to be one of my choices. Yeah, but on the other hand, I think you could say that for most of the horses in the field. Certainly mischievous Alex, I think the horses he's been beating sprinting probably are not as good as the horses that Silver State beat in the Oakland Handicap cap for instance i think silver state's a nice middle distance horse i don't really want him at a mile and a quarter so i think this race with speed and maybe vulnerable speed is a good spot for silver state five in a row yeah i know you're one of those guys who said well sooner or later they're going to lose but i'll tell you what if he's the third choice in here i think silver state has a big shot the four is lexingtonian a long shot he runs some good races and he ran a good race last time out but i think he deserves to be the sixth choice in the six horse field Absolutely, Brian, but uh, uh, Lexitani and these horses from uh, Calumet Farm have gotten to be the upset specials, but I can't use them. I can't use them either, Matt, but the other horse on the list is number five by my standards. I was really surprised to see 10 to 1 on the morning line on a horse of this class. I guess it's because his last two races last year were not up to standard, but he wasn't a mile and a quarter horse for the Breeders' Cup Classic. He had a pretty bad trip in the Clark after the classic i think he's a much better horse than he showed in those two and i thought he ran a good race to beat rushy last time in his first race of the year in the oakland mile 10 to 1 matt those odds are crazy to me with a horse with this much clout uh somebody has to be a little bit higher odds than everybody else i did like his return um in the oakland mile uh got back to the find my standards that were used to seeing but once again i have to say uh uh, uh this trip to to uh, belmont park is something new and this is a pretty formidable field yeah i like him matt i like by my standards i think he's better at a mile than he is at a mile and a quarter i think he sits third early gets first jump on the leader so i think he's a very dangerous horse i'm hoping he's somewhere near those morning line odds i have a feeling he'll be a little lower than that matt who's your top pick who's your long shot in the Met mile um, I think so far, Brian, it's very clear that we disagreed on just about everything in the first two races. My top pick is Mischievous Alex. Um, uh, if he can put together a race like he, like he did last time in the Carter, he's going to be tough to beat. My long shot is Dr. Post. Okay, yeah, Dr. Post I can use here, but uh, I'm looking at the odds a little bit more, Matt. My top pick is Silver State. I think this will be a perfect spot for him to rally at a mile. I just like the way this sets up, and I think he's underrated. I think he's a very good horse that people just don't realize how good he is coming from the Midwest. The odds, I got to go with by my standards at 10 to 1. Dr. Post and him, I could see um, as I, I like him similarly, but I think by, by my standards, it's more proven than Dr. Post. Give me 10 to 1. He's my top long shot in the Met Mile. Matt, we got a big race for Phillies and Mares, a mile and 16th. It's called the Ogden Phipps. It's race seven on this card, and it could be the best race of the day. We got Swiss Skydiver breaking from the rail, Matt. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be one of the best races of the day, but, uh, but certainly, again, uh, a small but select field. And this one's interesting because there's a good bit of early speed in the race. There is a good bit of early speed, and I think Swiss Skydiver is a horse who wants to be close to the lead, Matt. I think she's one of the best horses in America. I saw it last year in the Alabama and, and, and certainly the Preakness, and I saw it this year in the Beholder Mile. I know she didn't run her race when she was third last time in the Apple Blossom. I think she's training up a storm, and I think she's going to prove again why she is one of the best horses in the race. I like Swiss Skydiver on the rail. Uh, Brian, I also like Swiss Skydiver, but I'll be honest with you, I wasn't going to pick a Swiss Skydiver. I didn't like that performance in the Apple Blossom, obviously, but then I heard Kenny McPeak talking uh, the other day, and he said that uh, in the Apple Blossom, Swiss Skydiver was just not at 100%. She had been under treatment for an infection in a rear leg, and, and it, limited, it limited her training. And, and heading into the race, McPeak was really undecided about running her. He ran her. She wasn't quite ready. But I think in this Ogden fifth, she's going to get the ideal setup. And I think she is back to 100%. So I'm going to give her a chance in the FIPS to show the Swiss skydiver style that we saw last year. 
Yeah. Hey, I, I would like her the Met Mile, quite honestly. That's how much I like Swiss Sky Driver. I know she wasn't uh, the horse that she is in the Apple Blossom. A lot of good horses she has to beat. Latruska is the morning line favorite off that Apple Blossom win, Matt. Latruska, absolutely. Uh, beating the field that include Mon included Monomoy Girl and Swiss Skydiver. She's in the best form of her career. Uh, uh, lots of great victories around the country. But you know what, Brian? I feel like last time was the time to have Latruska. And um, I'm going to go with others in the FIPS. Yeah, certainly the odds will be a little different. She was betting the Apple Blossom, but nothing like she'll be bet off that win in the fifth. She dares the devil, Matt, has just been terrific uh, ever since last spring. Indiana Oaks winner went to Kentucky, upset Swiss Skydiver and Gamine in the Kentucky Oaks last year. She's been very good this year with two nice wins. Yep, she could be out there knocking heads with Latruska in the early going, but boy, she's two for two this year with a grade one win in the La Troyenne and a grade two in uh, the Aziri. So uh, yeah, what a terrific, terrific horse she shares the devil is. Yeah, trained by Brad Cox, who's got a lot of big horses running this weekend, a big threat, obviously. Not two uh, horses that might be closer to long shots in here. Maybe Valiance isn't because she finished the year so well, beating Sherry. She dares the devil in the spinster before rallying for second in the Breeders' Cup distaff. This will be her first race of the year, though. Yeah, Brian. Um, I think I'd like her a lot more than I already do if this wasn't her first start of 2021. But boy, uh, she was really good uh, last year. She went into the Breeders' Cup distaff with three nice wins in a row and, and then actually finished second in the distaff. But um, I think the race sets up really well for her uh, stalking style. But boy, I would have loved it if she'd had a start. Yeah, very nice mare making this field really, really good. Those top four we've already talked about. I want to mention Bonnie South as well because She's a nice rallier, and she's the real one well, uh, of all these graded stakes winners, multiple graded stakes winners. She's the one that's going to be coming from farther off the pace map. I wouldn't completely throw out Bonnie South, also from the Brad Car Cox farm. I wouldn't either, uh, 10 to 1 on the morning line, but I feel like when you talk about the resumes that we have of these uh, the, these top uh, fillies and mares, maybe she's just a little cut below. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree with that. Uh, but just like by my standards, an awfully good horse to have 10 to 1 on the morning line. All right, Matt, top pick, long shot for the Ogden Phipps. I guess maybe we are going to agree a little bit here on this one, my friend. Uh, Swiss Skydiver, my top pick, and Valiance, my long shot. Yeah, and I'm going to say the exact same thing, Matt. I really like Swiss Skydiver. As tough as this field is, I think she's the best horse in the race. I think she'll bounce back and win it. I debated between Valiance and Bonnie South. I just think Valiance is a little bit better. She'll be a little closer to the pace, and I think that probably helps her here. So she's my top long shot as well. Let's stick with the Phillies, Matt. We got the Acorn, which is always a fun race. Back to that Met Mile distance, a one mile, a one turn, one mile at Belmont Park. We got some good ones. We don't have Malathot in here, but we got some of the best 3 old Phillies in the country besides her. We sure do. We've got the search results in the race uh, who is listed at even money uh, on the morning line search results who was second who ding donged it down the stretch with Malathot to uh, finish second beaten by just the neck um, and, and that was a very impressive uh, performance before that search results also look really strong uh, running out of her own stall at Belmont Park for Chad Brown. Yeah, she should be the favorite, although even money on the morning line, uh, that's a little bit low for me. I have a couple warning bells going off. She's been going against slower paces, going two turns. Now she has to drop back to a mile. As a pretty heavy favorite, I wonder what her speed is going to do with a fast pace in here, Matt. So I, I do think she's a little bit vulnerable. Even money's too low for me. There are some other good options in here, though, Matt. We can start with Day Out of the Office, who has a lot of speed. She's never run a bad race. She's never finished worse than second. And I thought her return race went second in the eight bells was pretty brave, pretty game performance. Yeah, and a lot of speed, as you said, Brian. And uh, last year as a two-year-old, uh, she had some awfully big wins. 
awfully big wins, including a one mile grade one for Zet win at this try. Now there is speed, as we said, for day at the, uh, out of the office to worry about. And that mainly comes from uh, the Philly Miss Brazil. And if you look at Miss Brazil, I mean, what has she done wrong since she's switched to dirt after her, a turf debut, Matt? The only horse that's beat her was search results. And that was a tough beat a few starts back, but she got a sharp, good looking win over the track and she is a speedy filly. Yeah, Brian really uh, has done nothing wrong and certainly improved since uh, getting on the dirt and is absolutely going to be a pace factor in this race. Yeah, her and day out of the office, I expect to be out there, Matt. Search results shouldn't be too far back. I like the fact that travel column will not be on the lead. I don't think she's a true speed horse. She inherited the lead in the Kentucky Oaks. I didn't think that's where she wanted to be. She faded a little bit late, but cutting back to a mile where she could be just off the pace, I think Travel Column is going to run an improved race. The daughter of Frosted, and we rem remember how much Frosted loved Belmont Park. I think Travel Column could be sitting on a big one in the acorn. Well, she's going to have to do both of those things that you said, Brian. She's going to have to be sitting on a big one, and she's going to have to get back to some of her better races. Um, so it's either going to be that or that, or maybe the fact that she was exposed a little bit in the Kentucky Oaks. We shall see. Yeah, and the horse she beat uh, previously, two, two out of three, Claire Air, ran a good race in the Kentucky Oaks. I still believe in Travel Columns class. Another one we got to mention is obligatory, Matt, and she looks like the only closer in this whole race. Yeah, Brian, that's for sure. A legitimate closer who uh, ran a really nice race uh, last month when she won the eight bells at Churchill Downs. She absolutely did. She came from last that day, Matt, and with some speed here and with the uh, travel column and search results probably stalking, she's the one that could really benefit if this pace is very fast. She looks like a filly who should be running. She showed that she has the talent in the eight bells. I think she's a, uh, a must use in the exotics in this race, Matt. All right, who's your top pick? Who's your long shot in the acorn, my friend? My top pick is search results. She ran, she ran second behind the, the division leader in Malathot. And my long shot in this race, who I really like a good bit um, as a long shot, is obligatory. Matt, I'm going to uh, I'm going to poo poo you now because you can return the favor in a few minutes. You chalk eating weasel you, even money on search results. No, thank you. She could certainly win, folks, and I respect her. But I think this is a spot to beat her, and I think there's a few good options in here. My top one is Travel Column. I think she can come from fourth early, make a move. She's got a quick turn of foot. I think this is a perfect spot for her. Third choice on the morning line. She's my top pick. I'll agree with Matt. Obligatory as maybe the fifth choice in here, fourth or fifth choice. She is a wonderful long shot, especially to use underneath in the exotics. She'll be my top long shot as well. Let's jump in one more race, Matt, the Woody Stevens. We got to talk about the Woody Stevens because the Pat Day Mile was so darn good and it features the two main participants in that excellent edition of the Pat Day Mile. Jackie's Warrior, Dream Shake meeting again and the Pat Day Mile was an absolutely terrific race. It was Brian and, and Jackie's warrior came back uh, uh, after having a, an absolutely terrific campaign in the uh, uh, last year as a two year old uh, winning that uh, Pat Day mile. Everything went the way of Jackie's warrior. Dream Shake was just right close behind in second. They are the top two uh, choice, uh, choices on the morning line. Jackie's Warrior at seven to five, but Brian, we said that the Ogden Phipps had a lot of speed, we speed in it, and we said that the Acorn had a lot of speed in it, but Brian, the Woody Stevens has a lot of speed in it. Yeah, I don't know if there's any speed like Jackie's Warrior speed, though, Matt, and he's proven over this Belmont track. We saw how good he was in the one mile champagne. This is a seven for a long race, and you're right, there is a bunch of speed in here. But who's going to go with Jackie's Warrior early? Is it Drain the Clock, who's been doing so well in sprint races? Is it Dream Shake, who chased him, I don't want to say futilely, but could never get to him at a mile at Churchill Downs? And then you got Cato River, who's coming out of a nine furlong race. Good horses for sure. Uh, Drain the Clock, Cato River, we need to talk about. But do any of them have Jackie's Warrior speed? I'm not sure. 
Uh, Brian, I don't know if they have Jackie's warrior speed in terms that they're going to be uh, three of them across the track, head to head all the way around, but they are certainly going to be pressuring Jackie's warrior in here. And Brian, you know, from the past that I'm a huge fan of Jackie's warrior. And earlier on in the week, when I saw that Jackie's warrior was going into Woody Stevens, I had my mind made up that Jackie's warrior was absolutely going to see, be my pick. But then I saw the horses that ended up entering and the amount of speed in there and the odds in there. And even though I love Jackie's warrior, uh, uh, she's got, she, he's uh, up against it in this race. Yeah, and I, I, I'm on the other bandwagon a little bit, Matt. I just think he's the speed of the speed in here. Belmont's usually souped up on this Belmont Stakes Day. Uh, I don't know that Dream Shake is even as close as he was last time early because of the setup in here. I don't know that Train the Clock has quite the speed or the class of Jackie's Warrior. And Caddo River coming out of a nine furlong Arkansas Derby. I think Jackie's Warrior can go wire to wire. But if you're right and there's just a ton of pace pressure in 43 and change, who's the horse that's going to rally, Matt? It, it looks like it might be Nova Rags. Yeah, it sure does, uh, Brian. And, and Nova Rags is listed at eight to one on the morning line. A confirmed closer uh, who, re who most recently we've seen trying to run on the Kentucky Derby Trail, but we just have to go back to that seven furlong Pasco um, earlier in the winter at Tampa Bay when he came flying off the pace for Bill Mott. Nova Rags could be getting the ideal setup. He could be, Matt, and that, that's going to lead right into our top pick and our long shot for the Woody Stevens, which I think I believe is race three, Matt. This is bright and early on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, it sure is, Brian. Um, I tell you, Brian, when you sent me your picks um, I, I, and I sent my picks to you, I thought somehow uh, in, in the ether space out there that our, our picks had gotten shifted around or something had happened in our minds because uh, these picks don't jive with what we usually do. Uh, 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 your picks, Brian, should be my picks. And I think my picks should be your picks. But anyway, I'm going with Caddo River as my top pick. I think he never was a horse that should be going two turns. I think the cutback to seven furlongs is ideal. I think he's got tactical speed. I think he might just sit right off of it and make a run that could be a winning one. And my long shot will be Nova Rand. Here's my one problem with Cattle River, and I, I've always liked Cattle River. I don't know that he's a horse that wants to pass horses, but if he does want to pass horses, this is a heck of a good start, a uh, heck of a place to do it, because I think you're going to have that fast pace where he could just outclass horses uh, after five or six for long. I just don't think Jackie's Warriors the type of horse to give it up, Matt, unless we're going two turns. And at seven furlongs, I think he'll be on the lead, and I don't think anybody's going to get him. However, if anybody does get him, I think it might be Nova Rags because he he does look like a horse who wants to rally in sprint races. So he's a great long shot here at eight to one on the morning line. So I'm going Jackie's Warrior and Nova Rags is my top pick and my long shot in the Woody Stevens. That was my only favorite of the five, Matt. And I think you might have only given out one favorite on the morning line as well. So we're going against the favorites for the most part, folks. Uh, I hope we've got some winners for you. Matt, can I get a party shot from you? Absolutely, Brian. It's a, a great weekend of racing. I'll be at Belmont Park on Friday and uh, Saturday. If any of you horse racing, uh, 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 horse center fans uh, are uh, vaccinated and will be out there, uh, say hello. Um, if you see me around, Brian, I think this could be a good weekend for you. You got a little birthday luck coming up on Saturday also, don't you? Yeah, Belmont Day is also my birth date, Matt. I'm finally turning 34 after all these many years. Uh, no one's going to believe that. Anyway, I tried. Hey, Matt, I want to thank our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Thanks to our producer. Thanks, it's Tony, Tony Bada Bing, folks. Tony Bada Bing is our producer. Candace Curtis put together those race graphics for us. And most of all, folks, I want to thank you. Hopefully you have a wonderful Belmont Stakes Day weekend. 
it's going to be a big, big uh, uh, weekend. Thursday, it starts with a few greatest stakes. Friday gets a little bit better. And then, boom, we got Saturday. Enjoy it, folks. Cash those tickets big. We'll be back right here next week on Horse Time.